They make a great snack. We eat them plain or covered in chocolate. They're an important ingredient in many of our favorite holiday dishes. But how do these nuts end up in your pecan pie? On this field trip, we'll explore the pecan industry and learn about one of America's favorite treats. Field Trip is made possible by Cooperative Extension Service at New Mexico State University and by contributions from viewers like you. Thank you. America is the largest producer of pecans in the world. There's certainly a high demand for these tasty nuts, but a lot of people are unaware of how they're grown and processed. The pecan industry in the United States produces a vast quantity of nuts each year to meet the demands of national and international markets. The pecan process involves growers, specialized equipment, cleaning and shelling plants, retailers, and of course consumers. Pecans, as well as several other nuts, but pecans especially, are very healthy. They're high in antioxidants. I think they rate number, the last time it was the number 14 or 15th rated of all foods. I prefer pecans to uh, really to most other nuts, but I will put them in not only my desserts, but I love them in my salads. Well, what I really enjoy about cooking with pecans is they can go with anything. No matter what the dish is, is if it's a dessert, if it's an entree, or an appetizer, it's all going to go. You can use it with fish, chicken, salads, sweets, anything. Pecans predate the birth of our nation. These nuts have been an important food source to the native people of North America long before the arrival of European settlers. Pecan nuts were even enjoyed by some of our founding fathers. Both George Washington and Thomas Jefferson had pecan trees. Well, pecans are basically a native to the United States, the southern United States and Mexico. They grew close to rivers so that they could get a lot of water. My grandfather and great-grandfather came up from Texas, from Clint, Texas. They were farmers down there, cotton farmers, and they started buying up land here in the Mesilla Valley. They originally did it to plant cotton because that was their first love. And uh, there was a, a truck full of pecan trees, of baby pecan trees that could not be delivered to its rightful owner, so my grandfather bought them all. And so that's how the pecan farming started. They started clearing out all the land and planting pecan trees, planting cotton in between the pecan trees. As the pecan industry grew, only the United States really consumed the pecan. And my father, Bill Stallman, did a lot of work as far as trying to get other countries to eat pecans. He put in the foundation for all this growth that is now. Our dad, Tom Salapek, was the fourth child out of six. In 1950, he purchased the main farm. Back then, it was uh, row crops, and alfalfa was our main staple. And uh, in the 1970s is when we first started planting the trees here on the main farm. Pecan production has grown along with technology. Specialized equipment and machinery have been developed for the harvesting, shelling, and cleaning of pecans. From my understanding, they would use a pole and they would uh, knock them out. There used to be very primitive shakers compared to what we have today. The shaker's designed to come up to the tree and uh, shake the nuts out. It has wheel sweeps on it. The sweeps sweep the nuts uh, away from the wheel so you don't smash them when you're pulling into the tree and backing out. Uh, it can grab a whole tree or it can do a uh, limb shake depending on the size of the tree. The shaker was developed around 1960. Uh, this machine can do in an hour what 25 or 30 people would do in a day. The sweepers, they'll go into the fields after you use the shaker, and there's a blower on the other side. It will blow the uh, nuts from the tree row so that the sweeper can move them out and put them into a wind row where you can come through with the harvester and pick them up. Harvesters are designed to be, this particular one here is designed to be pulled with a tractor. 
pits the nuts up after the, they've been shook and windrowed with the sweeper, and they can start taking them to the cleaning plant and doing the uh, rest of the process with them. Pecan trees are a type of hickory tree, and there are over 600 different varieties. Although each one is unique, growers look for trees that can thrive in their own environment and produce desirable crops. Predominantly is the western schlei, uh, the majority, and then we have uh, a few pollinators, uh, the Wichita and the Bradley that uh, come out earlier and, and, and later. The Bradley is the best tasting nut. It's rounder than the other nuts and it's a lot fuller, but the oils in it just make it taste really, really good. The Western Sly is uh, the easiest nut to process because it doesn't get completely full, so we can crack the shell off of it really easy and it still tastes good. And the Wichita ends up producing really large halves. Pecans are slow-growing trees. It takes seven to eight years before a tree is ready for commercial nut production. A lot of hard work and patience is needed to develop a pecan orchard. We have an old adage that we say that you live and die in the pecan business. And by that, what we mean is that, you know, the trees will outlive you. Um, we have trees in this valley that are, uh, some of them are probably over 100 years old. It's something that pretty much once you go in, you're in it for the rest of your life. So that's a question that people continually that are in the pecan business are always looking at is, you know, what's my future going to bring? Because you don't really have that option. Well, if things really get bad, then, you know, I'm gonna, I can just go take the trees out and we'll plant something else. Looking and analyzing year to year, particularly where you've had some tough years, you know, how you're going to do down in the future is, is a question that all pecan growers will in generally start asking themselves over a period of time. People usually think that we only work in November and December when we're harvesting, which is not true. As soon as harvest is over, we start pruning. And so we usually prune about 10% of our trees, 10% of our orchard. And um, after that, we have to take away all the prunings or grind up all the prunings in the, in the pecan fields. We have to fertilize. We have to uh, cultivate the soil to get ready for the first irrigation. Now, the first irrigation usually happens right around the 1st of April. And that's when the trees start budding out. So that's when all the, the work starts with, with irrigating uh, with fertilizing, uh, with spraying minerals on the trees. We do that because certain minerals, the trees are not able to absorb here in the Mesilla Valley. So we have to spray them on the leaves so that the tree can absorb them. Um, and all summer long, we uh, just mainly cut grass, mow weeds, uh, irrigate, and take care of the pecans so that they they turn out to be really good quality. With the arrival of spring, flowers emerge on the trees. Pollination occurs when gusty spring winds spread the pollen throughout the orchard. The tree itself has female flowers and male flowers on the same tree and they're separate. These are the are the male flowers. You can see and and the female flowers are the ones that produce the nuts. And at the very tip of the of the female flowers is a little uh, almost like a little sponge that uh, is where the pollen ends up landing. Healthy trees are essential to pecan production. Fertilizer is used to provide the nutrients the trees need to grow a good crop. We use a uh, foliar plus extra, it's called. It's a calcium base 15.33, and uh, we add our zinc nitrate 8%, and that just gives the uh, pecans uh, everything that they need. You know, our dad years ago was stressed. It's better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. 
We also spray minerals on the trees and some other micronutrients that, that the tree otherwise would not absorb through the, through the ground, through the roots, just because of the pH of the soil. So we spray it on the leaves. And uh, so as you would probably figure out that pecans have a lot of zinc in them. They're high in zinc and they're high in potassium. It may seem unusual, but ladybugs are used to help prevent other pests from harming the trees. This method of pest control, along with others, are vital to pecan production. One of the pests that we get is the yellow pecan aphid, but we uh, take care of the yellow pecan aphid with the ladybugs and lacewing flies. And the ladybugs really love the way the yellow pecan aphid tastes. They eat that up right away. It's a really good part for their diet. Um, the black pecan aphid is kind of sour and yucky, I think, to the ladybugs, so they, they won't eat it. They won't even touch it. That's why we have to spray for them. These leaves show a good example of what black pecan aphid damage looks like. The yellow and brown spots are, are the spots created when the insect um, injects its mouth parts into the plant tissues. And, uh, and when, when it does that, it, um, it, it actually injects a little bit of a, of a toxin as well, and that kills the, the tissue where the insect injects its mouth parts. Trees need water in order to thrive, and although flood irrigation is used to water the trees, growers are very conscious as to how they use their resources. We are getting this field. Uh, we just put out our fertilizer with the mire. Uh, we try to water it in within 24 hours. Right now, the trees aren't using that much water. We're on a three-week schedule on sand, four weeks on heavy ground. As soon as we start getting into 100 degree days, we'll pick it up. The, the watering's to two weeks on sand three weeks on heavy ground. We used to let the weeds grow, the grass. It seems like we used a lot more water than we do now. Now no till, uh, no weeds, weed free. Everything adds up to less water. The laser level, probably the biggest impact on farming other than going to the tractors from horses. On this farm, before we had the laser level to irrigate, we had to build, I believe it was 278 borders. Today we don't build one border, we put, put it in blocks, put the border in the tree line, put high flow gates in our ditches, became more efficient. And uh, so it's really nice and enjoyable irrigating. Pecans are fully developed by late fall, and with cooler weather just around the corner, harvesting will begin with the first hard freeze. The big changes have been that we have learned how to manage our orchards better. So when this orchard was planted, there was a lot of experimenting going on. Uh, they didn't realize, you know, which was the best way to level a field. They didn't know which fertilizers were the best for this area at the beginning. They uh, didn't know that the pecan trees here needed a lot of zinc. And so that all took a lot of experimenting and, and working with laboratories and the university. And I think that we've gotten to a point where we know, uh, I think all the pecan growers in the valley know what their trees need now as far as food is concerned. Um, the machinery is also has evolved a lot 